Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So um, I thought just for something a little bit different, I was um, catching up with the uh, posts on the Scholar Gladiatoria context posting page on Facebook, which for anyone who doesn't know, I'll put a link below this video, go and check that out. It's essentially, it's a fan page. It's not uh, run by me or uh, in any way controlled by me or uh, and it's moderated by the people that do run it so it's completely independent um, and uh, but yeah go and check it out there's some funny stuff on there uh, and some educational and interesting stuff occasionally as well um, but one of the things that came up was an image um, which you'll see on your screen now which is by Rafis Kuzin I think um, and it's of a sort of medieval Batman um, now, uh, this is uh, this is pretty uh, pretty interesting and pretty cool idea. Um, you know, I'm I'm not a massive um, comic book um, aficionado, but I do like Batman. I like I love the um, Nolan Batman trilogy, um, and I think it's a pretty cool idea for a superhero, basically. Um, but so I like the idea that there's this. Uh, so I know of the Dark Knight Dynasty um, series, which kind of shows a Crusades era Batman, which Rocky Scott um, actually mentioned in that thread. Incidentally, the thread was posted by Martin Evans. So man thanks to Martin Evans for posting this on the Scholar Gladiatoria context posting page. And um, yeah, it, so this is this is essentially a kind of almost D and D kind of role playing medieval idea of what a medieval Batman would look like. It's not how I would design it. I mean, so so what are the pluses and minuses of this? Well, the, the obvious plus is it's a cool idea, okay? Um, and uh, but we've got to kind of bring some context into this, okay? So so there are certain things that I think are supposed to be a constant with the Batman character. Um, one is that he is from a wealthy kind of aristocratic background. So he's going to have access to the best gear. And yes, he's highly trained. Um, in some versions of the story, he's a ninja. Uh, but in other versions of the story, he's just very highly trained, whether he be a knight or whatever. Um, so he's highly trained in some form or another, but he doesn't actually really have any superpowers apart from being hugely wealthy, well-trained and having access to the best gear. A little bit has to be said like James Bond. OK, so he's kind of like a, a full on superhero version of James Bond, I think, but maybe without James Bond's um, uh, kind of confidence with with uh, ladies. Um, but. And of course, he hides his identity, and that's very important. So any version of Batman that we do in any period, um, I think it's about hiding the identity as well. And maybe he has a public face, a Bruce Wayne face, uh, which is in some ways you could say a little bit more like James Bond. Um, but he has this public facing and then he has the, the, the vigilante crime fighting face, which is hidden. So I think any kind of um, kit that we put him in has to have some form of um, mask, which they have done here. So uh, some of my feedback on this um, image. So it is quite, there is quite a lot of fantasy elements to it. So let's move from the bottom up. So those boots, um, those boots are like nothing historical I can think of. There's something more out of, I don't know, kind of like 1980s wrestling costumes. Um, so they're, they're big, chunky leather boots. Um, and they've got kind of plates put over the ankle. Well, this is precisely the worst place to put any kind of plates, okay? If you're going to put plates on boots, you stick them on the shins. Shins are a really good thing to protect, uh, and you stick them on the top of the foot. Look at medieval plate armor, okay? You've got sabatons, and you've got greaves, but the junction between those two has to be articulated, has to be able to move, because you've got to move if you're going to fight, if you're going to run, walk, mount a horse, whatever. So sticking the plates right at the bend of the ankle is the worst possible place. Uh, and really, that should be the, the most flexible. If, if you're going to leave any armor off anywhere, don't leave it off the shins or the toe. Um, leave it off the ankle. So there we go. I think those plates are in the wrong place. They should be higher up and lower down or one or the other. Uh, in terms of the legs, there's nothing, there's no form of armor on the legs. And I'll also throw in the arms that while I'm at it, that most of the arms are completely unarmored. And I think this is a big mistake because Batman is always pretty much armored. Um, 
I know there's perhaps some versions, some bits of uh, the stories where he decides he elects to have less armor to be more mobile or for stealth or whatever. But generally speaking, if you're wearing any kind of armor, you're not in this for stealth. OK, you don't wear a helmet and uh, massive pauldrons for stealth. So I think it's really important that this guy puts on at least some male armor commonly known as chainmail. Um, so uh, he needs to at least have mail, um, but even better, perhaps some, some plate, uh, if, if we're talking about the era of plate, and I'll get into that in a moment, um, because context, what period is this? Um, and then moving up, we've got a kind of skirt with an overlapping front, which looks a kind of poor design to me because it's not going to flex up and down very well it's not split as such it's kind of overlapped um, but I guess that could have a split at the back or something like that in, for anyone who doesn't know if you're wearing any kind of skirt it needs to be able to split or open in order for you to crouch down bend down uh, lift your legs up if you want to knee someone in the face or if you just you know you're just moving around quickly or indeed if you want to mount a horse uh, so that skirt area is quite critical and that's why even in the plate armor era uh, so you know talking about 14th 15th 16th centuries very often we have a male skirt around there because male is of course very flexible um, then next up the thing he's wearing on his body looks like a gambeson now, one nice detail about the gambeson is that it is buttoned and uh, closed on the correct side. If you're right side dominant, if you're right handed, in other words, if you have an opening on the front, then, yeah, admittedly, like with my brigandine and lots of other armors, it does close in the middle. But if you're going to have it closing on one side or the other, have it on the side, which is away from the opponent, which would be the left hand side. But as mentioned, his arms really need a bit more protection on them. And he's wearing a pair of sturdy leather gloves. And I like the fact that they've put the characteristic little uh, kind of blades or fins on the gloves uh, as part of the Batman costume, which is a cool idea. I would say, you know, maybe make those male uh, mittens at least if not plate gauntlets if again if we're talking about in the period now we get to the oh let's just mention the utility belt i actually love the utility belt because that is a nod to Bat the classic batman uh, kind of costume um, and that's really cool and there's nothing like this that i've ever seen that's a, quite a modern looking buckle um, and the pouches look kind of more like world war one or victorian than they look like anything from the medieval period but I love the idea that they've attempted to do a medieval version of the utility belt. Fantastic idea, if not perfectly executed. Um, now, let's get to the shoulders and head and uh, neck. So there are some things I like about this and some things I don't like about this. First of all, what I do like about it is that they've attempted to do something that is historically inspired, but also Batman. Um, what I also sort of like about it is those elements are sort of historically inspired by things that did exist in history, but I'm not entirely sure what things. The shoulders look somewhat like um, some of the shoulder guards that you get in the Roman era, uh, particularly sort of a little bit like uh, Lorica Segmentata shoulders, but not really, not the way that they go down the arm. They look a little bit like the manica that you get on for certain Roman gladiators, but again, they go all the way down the arm. They don't just stop at the elbow. So again, it's not really... Uh, there's something. There's some things which are left to be desired about the way that those shoulders have been designed, but I like the fact that they look historically plausible, even if they're not really historically modelled on something specific. Now, the helmet is really interesting because actually the helmet to me looks like a sort of Vendel period or early Anglo-Saxon helmet, possibly even an ornate version of a later Viking era helmet, like the Yarm helmet, for example, but with the added ears. And I actually think the helmet and the attached scale um, uh, Lorica uh, Aventel, essentially, coming down uh, from the helmet is possibly my favorite um, part perhaps with the utility belt, just because that's cool. Uh, but I think the helmet and the Avental is possibly my favorite part of this design um, because it shows a certain amount of historical interest and knowledge. And I actually think, certainly if we're setting this, say, for example, in the um, migration era or Viking era, it, it's kind of historically plausible. It looks absolutely like something that could have been made in the 6th, 7th, 8th centuries, particularly. Um, now, 
overall that uh, context that I mentioned. So for me, the big problem with this is they haven't decided when this Batman is supposed to be set. And this is really like fantasy medieval. And this is one of the biggest drawbacks of fantasy medieval stuff is that whilst it's kind of cool to go, oh, well, let's just take the best bits of what we like. Let's have some gothic you know late 15th century gothic german harness mixed in with some viking era helmet mixed in with some you know whatever middle eastern um body defense you can mix all of those things together but the problem is it doesn't make sense if you're trying to create a uh, believable homogenous fantasy world because of technology and the simple fact is that technology goes in hand in hand with other technology so um, unless areas are completely isolated from each other, most of the uh, sort of um, developed medieval world was in contact with each other through trade, warfare, diplomacy, everything else. So the fact is that when there were technological advantages, um, uh, advances in uh, Persia, they influenced technological advances in Turkey, or Ottoman Empire, which influenced technological advances in Hungary and in Spain and in all sorts of other places. So these technology bleeds out and you, you only really get areas that are left far behind if they're very isolated geographically or in socially in any other way. So the problem uh, is that I don't see where this is. Number one, my problems with this are number one, I don't see when this is supposed to be set. I would say if I guess, looking at the stuff there, I would say it's supposed to be set in a fantasy version of the, like I say, this maybe the 6th to 9th centuries. So what some people would call the Dark Ages. Um, but then the problem is, you could say he's got plate armor on his shoulders, but he's got nothing, no real convincing armor, nothing that would stop a peeler or an arrow on his chest. He's got no no mail on his arms or legs. Um, and there's the problem with those boots and where the plates are located on those. He would literally be better off taking those plates off his ankles and suspending them on his chest. Um, so there we go. I think it's a great idea. And I have no problem with the cloak, by the way. The cloak's cool. Um, I think it's a great, great idea, but I'd love to see it redone uh, with some advice from someone who knows about historical armor and also who knows about the practicalities of protecting yourself um, uh, and fighting in, with medieval weapons and uh, protecting yourself from them. Anyway, I hope this has been a bit of fun, a bit of interest. And go and check out... Um, the Scholar Gladiatoria context posting page, which should have put the link below. Thanks again to Martin Evans for posting this image. Thanks to Rafis Kuzin for making the image. And thanks also to Rocky Scott, particularly for your input on the uh, Dark Knight um, Dynasty um, Crusades version of Batman, which I won't go into here, but it looks like he's not wearing enough armor for Batman, in my view. Um, but uh, thanks a lot for watching. If you've got any other ideas or about this, um, any other input or similar things you'd like me to have a look at. It's good fun and uh, thanks for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe and I'll see you again soon for another video here on Scholar Gladiatory channel. Cheers folks.